Hey, okay, hello everybody, how are you? So this is just a quick video to cover off some of the points that I didn't really go into too much details on before when we were looking at the software image management. Um, we were running 1.3.3.5 at the time. Yep, another upgrade, so we're on uh, 3.6 now. So we're looking at a device, uh, 9300, um, where the problem is that when we do a pre-check, we can see that HTTPS and SCCP, or SCP, sorry, is uh, not reachable, either one or both. Um, of these protocols. So in the lab wise, what we're going to be looking at, we've got DNAT 1336, as I said, uh, and 19300, which I have in my lab, which is still in this state. And of course, your host, me, Sam. Um, and this is the message. So when we do a, a pre check, we'll see this message comes up, which says uh, HTTPS and SCCP, uh, SCP, I keep adding an extra C in there, uh, is not reachable. So I didn't go into too much detail before, and I'm just going to cover off how to validate, check, and fix that if required. So let's just dive straight into the lab. Okay, here we are back on the mothership Cisco DNA Center. Let's have a look at the version we've got. So we're on 1336, the latest and greatest from Cisco Systems. Anyway, folks, let's not dwell. If we go to the provision page and have a look under here, it was the software images where we left off. And I can see I have a device here. It's a 9300. It's a UK innovation fabric in the box switch, and it needs an update. However, it has a big red cross. Red is bad. And we can see here there's a file transfer check. So basically one of the checks that's done as part of the readiness check is can DNA center download via HTTPS or SCP to the switch. In this case, no. So, what could be the problem? Let's investigate. So, first things first, I like to use my trusty truth seeker script. Let me let me get onto the box, which is now actually logged off uh, and nice and secure. No enable password. Let me just grab my EEM script. Okay, let me just paste this on. So this is basically an uh, EEM script that whenever anything logs on or anyone logs on, I say anything because DNAC is a thing. It's not a, it's not a person, at least not yet. Skynet has not assimilated. We uh, will log that. So you can just, if I end here, it will give us a, uh, a console log. You know, I've run the command end. Okay, so we can also see anything else that's uh, that's been typed by your host. That's me, by the way. So let's just do another test because because this is good. If I jump back onto DNAC over here, Bosch, and then I'll go and recheck. And then back to our device so we can see what DNAC is running. It's a copy command. Can I copy HTTPS to null zero? Can I copy from SCP to no, zero. And in this case, the answer is no. And we can even test this for ourselves, right? So let's go with HTTPS first. Error. Can't access it. So what do we know about this? HTTPS, the key is in the S. S for secure. So how can we test this? There's some checks we need to run. So how do we um, maintain security through uh, trans uh, HTTP? with HTTPS and DNAC and our devices. As part of the um, discovery process in DNAC, when we first discover a device, we'll push down a certificate, which is DNAC's uh, signed certificate, which then allows us to do any further communications securely. Sorry if you can hear the noise in the background. Um, so we can check that. We can check if that's happened. So on, on the box itself, we can uh, show run section crypto and there should be a trust point configured which there is there is a uh, trust point called dna ca um, but actually i don't see a certificate further down um, if i was to check another box this is one i prepared earlier we can see actually the trust point is there and further down i can see i have the certificate, DNAC certificate itself, which I don't see on here. So there's a few things we could do to try and resolve this. Um, you could run a new discovery job. So I could go back to my discovery and find the device in question, which is this top one here, and then just rediscover because the discovery process should push down a certificate. 
Now, if that fails, um, I'm going to fast forward because this is not much fun to watch. Oh, that was super quick. Oh, it's still in progress actually, but we can hop on the box and we can have a look what's going on. You can see all of the show commands being run so that DNAT can ascertain the state of the device. But what I don't see being pushed down is a certificate. Now, in the event that this fails, you could delete the device from the inventory and, and re the device. I mean, these things are quite uh, quite a hassle to do. So another option is we just manually add the certificate in ourselves. So the first thing's first. I'm just going to delete this trust point. Delete this old trust point. Uh, so no, delete. Get rid of him. Yes. Be gone. Excellent. Okay, and I'm going to re-add him back in. Just to give me a nice, clean start. Cool. So that is our trust point defined. Now, we can download the certificate directly from DNAC ourselves that we're going to install onto this device. So what we need to do is we want to do a PKI enrollment with the device. Crypto, oh, I pasted in the, um, the same one again. If I go escape. So crypto PKI authenticate, sorry, not enroll with DNAC. And now it's asking us to paste the certificate from DNAC itself. So we need to go and get that. So we can go back to, to DNAC. And if we go to the URL, which is uh, HTTP forward slash, and then the DNAC IP address forward slash CA forward slash PEM, PEM, we should get a certificate. Now I appreciate you can't see, see that's downloaded this certificate here. You can't see my um, address bar. So I will show you the URL, which and then it's going to be the IP of DNAC and then ca.pem and then that will force a download of that certificate which we can see here and I'm going to open that open that certificate I don't want to save and my downloads uh, any all files and this is this certificate right here and I can take that certificate and I can copy that and paste it into a console here it's saying please enter the base 64 encoded certificate end with a blank line or the word quit so i just simply hit paste and then hit return do i accept this certificate yes i do thank you very much and that certificate is now installed now there's a few things we need to do we can retest we can retest manually so we can do that if i scroll back up we can run the same command that dnac run itself to see if this http copy is going to work from the config is the do, do the do, we can see that has been a success because we can establish a, sh a secure channel uh, with the controller. If we go back to DNAC itself under the software inventory and we can then click on needs an update and we can recheck, recheck. And I'll open up the console and we can see these same commands have been run. doesn't take too long success and then we can see that HTTPS is reachable but SCP is not reachable so at this point that's enough to satisfy the criteria if I hit refresh it should go green to be able to download uh, or push that box <laughs> push that box push that image to that device uh, but what if you want to use SCP, right? Let's let's have a look at SCP as well. Um, how can we how can we troubleshoot that? So we can see actually there's just some clues here. We can see the commands that are being run uh, by DNAC. Let's just run them ourselves and see what's going on. So copy. Okay, so we can see that's failed. But actually, interestingly, you've got this bad packet length I mean what what is this guy so um, some useful commands we could we could run um, I mean I know the answer of course it'd be a silly video if I didn't know the answer we could um, debug IP SCP or is it just debug SCP oh there's a B in debug a B in debug yeah that was right <laughs> uh, and let's rerun that command again 
uh, in fact, and let's also do a debug SSH because it's uh, using SSH. And we'll be able to see a little bit more of what's going on amongst all of that noise. And without getting too bogged down with the details, we can see here that from Zenac we're seeing SSH version 2, and from ourselves version 1.9. Um, and then there's lots of other noise, and then we end up with that. error message we saw before which was back up here bad packet length so basically what the system is saying is that your ciphers are not correct between the two um, and the fix for this to get it up and working is simply IP SSH version 2 to turn on the right cipher suites then we can run that test again. Copy. We're going to get a lot of noise here. But we can see 19 bytes copied in 8.1 seconds. And then the rest of the noise is the debug from SSH. Now we want to check that. If we go back to DNAC, we can hit recheck. It will go and rerun those tests. Should turn that debugging off. That's a lot of noise. And we can see both HTTP and SCP is reachable, which is really good, which is what we want. Now, here's the million dollar question. If I now go, oh, no. all right, I've got that debugging turned off. What a, what a noise that was. Do you see how much traffic? Anyway, we can now see that they are both working. The million dollar question is, if I now go and push the image to the box, update image, what will I prefer, SCP or HTTPS? Oh, we can find out, hit next. We don't want to activate it afterwards and confirm. And we'll see that download take place, should. So it's inspecting the flash. HTTPS is preferred. We can have a look. So that's going to be 16.9, which is this middle one. It's not very big. And we can see that that file size is going up. Good. So, there we have it. In summary, there is two protocols that need to communicate between DNAC and the device, HTTPS and uh, SSH or SCP, which is a subordinate of SSH. The HTTPS protocol will not work unless we have a certificate installed on the device to allow that secure communication. If a certificate is missing, we could uh, rediscover the device or delete the device and re rerun discovery to try and force that certificate down or we can simply manually download the certificate from DNAC and add it to the device. Uh, for SCP, um, as long as SSH is enabled and there is uh, a secure key exchange, we need to ensure that we have version 2 turned on for the, the correct cipher suites to be used to establish that uh, trust between the two devices. Uh, brilliant. Okay, so thank you for the question, Sim Jim, on that one. I hope this uh, covers it up for anyone else that was not sure what's going on and where to troubleshoot and check and to fix these problems. And I'll see you next time on the next video.